IGA nephropathy is a very common reason for kidney failure in India and worldwide. Approximately 15% of patients in India with kidney disease have this condition. My name is Dr. Arjun Sabarwal and I'm here to explain to you what it is and how can you treat it. IgA nephropathy is a silent disease and in the beginning there are no symptoms, which makes early detection very difficult. Although IgA nephropathy was once considered a harmless form of kidney disease, more recent research and clinical observation have shown that it can indeed progress to end-stage kidney disease in 40-50% to 50 of patients in 20-30 to 30 years. As it progresses, it can cause more symptoms such as high blood pressure, swelling in your legs and also other features of CKD. In India, IG nephropathy is a serious concern because it often starts affecting people at a very young age compared to the rest of the world. Also, not everyone in India has easy access to healthcare. People living in rural areas and poorer areas often don't get the test they need until their disease becomes more severe and more symptoms start to appear. This can lead to a longer period of illness and more severe problems if not managed properly. A study looked at 478 patients who were confirmed to have IgA nephropathy through a biopsy. It showed that symptoms usually started 2-3 to three years after the disease started inside the body. Most of the patients, about 65% of them were men and the most common problem that led to them going to the hospital was nephrotic syndrome where the kidneys leak protein from the urine, renal failure which means the kidneys aren't working well. This was shown by a blood test where serum creatinine levels were more than 1.4 mg per dl in around 60% of the cases and also high blood pressure. Do share your own experience in the comments below and make sure to subscribe if you like the video. Why do people get this disease? Understanding why IgA nephropathy occurs is complex and still under investigation. However, advancements in research are shedding light on its pathophysiology, which is important in developing new medications. Recently, it has been suggested that the disease is linked to an abnormal immune response in our body to food and infection antigens leading to IgA deposits in the kidney. Pollution, especially in big cities, make the situation worse. Pollution can increase the risk of infection by affecting the air we breathe. These infections can then trigger the body's immune system to produce IgA protein, which can be deposited in the kidneys, causing IgA nephropathy. Diagnosing IgA usually involves a few important steps to confirm the presence of the disease. If you notice blood in your urine, or if your urine appears frothy, usually meaning that you're leaking protein in your urine, you should seek medical attention immediately. These symptoms can be early indications of IgA nephropathy or other kidney disease. When you come to the hospital, doctors do a urine dipstick which shows protein and blood in the urine which can indicate IgA nephropathy. We also do blood tests to look for the serum creatinine levels, urea levels, your EGFR and also some other tests to rule out other causes of kidney disease. To get a definitive diagnosis of IgA nephropathy, we can recommend sometimes doing a kidney biopsy. This is done with you lying on your stomach and the doctor using an ultrasound machine to locate the kidneys. After that, they use a numbing medicine and then take small biopsy or a, so or a small sample from your kidneys. This is then sent to the lab where a diagnosis of IgA nephropathy can be confirmed. Many new medications have come up for this disease, hence a biopsy proven diagnosis can make it easier to start medications if you are eligible for them. Treatment for IgA nephropathy has evolved significantly over the years. Historically, medications such as angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, which include ramipril, enalapril, or angiotensin receptor blockers such as candesartan, telmisartan, are used to manage blood pressure and reduce protein leakage from the kidneys. More recently, drugs such as SGLT2 inhibitors like dapagliflozin and empagliflozin have been also proven to be beneficial in IgA nephropathy by reducing the amount of protein you're leaking from your kidneys. The whole aim of these medications is to reduce the protein leak in the kidneys because research has suggested that protein urea is directly proportional to progression of kidney disease. You can check out my video here about how to reduce protein leak in the kidneys. Other medications such as steroids, traditionally administered in low doses, have also proven beneficial for some patients, but should only be started by a nephrologist and under medical supervision because of their side effects. In addition to these treatments, ongoing research is exploring the efficacy of newer medications, 
some of which are in the clinical trial phases and may soon be available for IgA nephropathy. This is a very exciting area for medical researchers because there has not been many medications for IgA nephropathy in the past few years. I will put a link below about the ones I'm excited about so that you can also read about it. Living with IgA nephropathy requires ongoing management and monitoring, adhering to treatment plans, maintaining a healthy lifestyle and regular medical checkups are crucial for managing this condition. Diet and lifestyle modifications such as reducing salt intake, managing protein consumption and keeping your blood pressure under control can also help manage the symptoms and progression of the disease. For those whose condition progresses to end stage kidney disease, kidney transplantation remains the best and most effective treatment. However, not everyone initially is eligible for it, hence most patients end up on being on dialysis. Transplantation can significantly improve the quality of life and survival rates. However, it's also important to note that IG nephropathy can reoccur in a transplanted kidney. So patients should be looking out for these symptoms and signs, the one which we discussed above. Hence, transplanted patients should also regularly follow up with their medical professionals. In India, where 14 crore patients have chronic kidney disease, 15% of those living with IgA nephropathy represents a very large number. Staying informed about the latest developments and engaging actively with healthcare providers are key to managing this condition effectively. As research continues to evolve, new therapies on the horizon may soon provide more hope for those affected by chronic kidney disease. I hope you liked this video and learned something new today. Take care and stay informed about kidney disease. See you next time.